It's the Logan Power Show Inspirational and motivational It's the Logan Power Show Informational to help you grow Logan, Logan, Logan Logan Power Show and now the host, Calvin Logan. Go. This is Jermaine Smith at the Logan uh, Power Show. At the Logan Power Show. That's right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Logan Power Show. It's me, your host, Calvin Logan. I thank you all for watching, tuning in, staying locked. Hey, we're here to make you excited. I'm here to have you leap off the screen. I'm here to turn it up in your car, turn it up on your television, turn it up on your radio, because we're here to make a difference, not just locally, not just across the nation, but across the globe. Well, I got with me a guest. He is, once again, He's excited to be in the Logan Power Show. He's the executive founder of Smith Pruton Reads LLC, author and illustrator of Brooklyn Astronaut. He's the one and only. They call him the man, the man with the master plan, Mr. Jermaine Smith. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for the um the entry. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it's, it's good. Entrepreneur is where I'm Superman and it's my superpowers. <laughs> Got it. Well, we're excited with your superpowers. Um, your children's books was featured in the, in the American Library Annual in 2018. Uh, we know that you received an editorial review from Linda Hollander, corporate sponsor coach, and has been featured in Forbes, Inc. and Entrepreneur Magazine. And in 2021, your Brooklyn uh, astronaut was featured on Fox, CBS, and NBC. So, man, you a celebrity around this joint. <laughs> I, you know, I've just been consistent with what I love. You know, I've been uh, building Brooklyn astronaut now for, uh, I've been promoting it for three and a half years. So close to four years, I just kept promoting my my book, year after year, I'm like, well, you got to get a game plan on track until we get there, you know? So I just stay consistent. I think consistency is key. Absolutely, consistency is key. Well, like, you know, a lot of times, you know, people think writing is easy, but it's not as easy as it makes it sound when you put it on a pen and a pad and you want to make it an actual come to life. So how did this thing come to life? How did, how did it all just come into this great full circle and this nucleus come together. How does it come together? You sound like you got a testimony you ready to tell. Yeah, man, I have a huge testimony. And what I can say is sometimes in trouble, um, there's a blessing and that's what happened. You know, I ended up, meet, I actually met a New York Times bestselling author. I won't state his name, but I met a New York Times bestselling author and uh, it wasn't a good business deal. It wasn't a good business transaction. He wanted to change my characters, put another artist on it. He wanted to change the direction of the story. I had a certain message that I wanted to promote with the brand and the story. So I ended up breaking off and doing my own thing. And um, that's, that's where the idea for Brooklyn Astronaut came in because originally you know, we were going to call it uh, Brooklyn Moon. But I was like, hold on, there's a restaurant called Brooklyn Moon. So I live in Brooklyn, you know, I'm a resident of Brooklyn. So i um, representing my city, my town, you know, Brooklyn astronaut. <laughs> you know, but that's how the idea came. The idea came through a situation that uh, could have been taken and received as bad. But on the flip side, it gave me uh, a multi-billion dollar brand, a franchise, if I could take the concept and run with it. So when I, didn't, when I broke it off, because he was going to call it Brooklyn Moon, I said, you know what, I'm going to call it Brooklyn Astronaut. And that's how the name and everything came from Brooklyn Astronaut, from um, growing from that painful um you know situation got it and to be a children's author is um something very commendable i know a lot of our youth today uh reading is a little difficult <laughs> and uh 
that and trying to find something that they can sort of connect with some something they can say it it identifies of them like i can make you dream i can make you think uh so for you when you think about brooklyn astronaut and how it's geared towards the young people what do you want young people to pull from when they read your book i want them to be entertained i want them to be entertained but also wanting to learn, seeing learning as a fun experience rather than seeing learning as a chore. Because 61% of low-income families don't have a book for their children to read. And that is a huge problem that we see in the community. One out of every four children growing up don't know how to read. And that's too many kids growing up not knowing how to read. So it's a big problem. You know, and this is just the first book in the series, but my goal is to reduce the statistics for that problem that we have. 61% of uh, families don't have books for their kids to read at home. So if, if their kids have a book, it's fun, it's inviting. He, he you know, the, the book is about dreaming big. Um, his name is Jamal. He wants to grow up and, and be an astronaut. He dreams about it. You know, but then I want to show the dream and the reality. So he ends up going to the Brooklyn Museum with his, his friends and his family and his mentor, because I also want to show mentorship as a tour guide. And so he learns all types of cool things about what he wants to do already. So, you know, I want to show the importance of mentorship, community youth, uh, community our support and positive family values. You know, um, I want to put all of those things back in and I want to get it on film. Uh, you know, the, you know, I want to put it in a book, get the other books out and then get it into a film and showcase that, you know, so that's my goal. And, and, and maybe that will get kids excited about reading. They want to read more books. Hey, reading is fun. Look what I learned about the moon. You know, maybe they want to learn something else and pick up a book. So, you know, just put that in their, in their, in their mind from a young age, you know? Absolutely. And for those who know how, how pivotal it is to think about an African-American astronaut, there's only been 15 African-American astronauts since the history of NASA. Think about that. Like, put that into your mind. Only 15 people that look like us has experienced something that's been life changing. Because when you say, when people say, oh man, I traveled from North America to say Asia. That's big. Cause you, you travel thousands and thousands of miles. But when you say I'm an astronaut and I travel from here to the moon, that's a whole nother conversation that you can't really say like everybody's in this forever group as a possibility. You know, it's a certain small group that can say I've accomplished something that's not everywhere can actually, you know, uh, dry, you know, dot the I's and cross the T's on. So by saying an African-American astronaut, how many books throughout reading has talked about African-American astronauts? Not too many that I'm that I've been reading in my lifetime. So I want to give you kudos because I think you're hitting something that kids are going to now say, okay, you know, I, my, my thing I always tell people is say, never say the sky's the limit because you just limited what God can do. Say the, un say, you know, say the universe is yours because right. if you say the universe is yours, now the, the mindset is like, okay, well, my faith may be from here to the sun. If your faith is here to the sun. That's a whole nother mindset. They everybody can't gravitate to because that kind of faith can say, you know, I get I go to the Earth's core and I'm not going to burn or I can travel to the, to the sun and back may take me a couple years to get back. But right. I promise you this. I'm going to have some pictures to show that I, I've been to somewhere that not everyone can say I've been to and came back successfully. Um, so I just want to give that to you. I think that that is something that, you know, I, I pray that your series uh, constantly reminds young people that you need to start getting back into the dreaming and get back to the learning and yes. think that is the thing is the dreaming and you're hitting home 61 percent of low-income fans with no book that is that's not uh as you would say uh 
statistic you said, that's a pandemic. That's literally saying it's a pandemic. That's literally saying, I like telling somebody that 61% of people that don't eat, but like say three times out of seven. That's what you're literally saying. That's how cri- critical it is. And I say, okay, when you go into someone's house, like, man, do you, you got a book? Nobody got a TV. Well, that's a problem because the book can be the answer to the TV. The book can be the answer to the house. The book can be the answer to so many things. So for you growing up as a young person in school, did you ever think to yourself, I would be an author? Like, I would really write a book? Oh, I didn't. <laughs> my, my, my journey was uh, music. My journey was music, you know. Um, I'm still get, you know, I'm still gonna get back into my music, you know. Um, I want to do what I have to do to promote this because it's very important, you know. Um, but I started off wanting to do music, man, you know. That was my original dream. So, um, and before that, I wanted to be a boxer, you know, Muhammad <laughs> Ali. I was inspired by the greats, you know. So. I think the greats is, is good because they inspire us to achieve and use our platform um, for the greater good, the way Muhammad Ali used his platform. So, um, yeah, I never thought, it never even crossed my mind being an author, you know. <laughs> I never thought about it, you know, until I got older and not really older, just went through certain life experiences And I said, you know, this is something that we need. We need this because, you know, like you said, that's a pandemic. 61% of families don't have a book for their kids to read. And one of the things that helped me, I had a, I had a mentor. His name was, uh, his name was Gabriel. And I remember growing up, I used to hate reading and he gave me this book by uh, Rich, uh, uh, Read and Grow Rich by Burke Hedges, the author by Burke Hedges, Read and Grow Rich. And um, I remember reading that book and and seeing the value in how reading was changing all these people's lives. I was like, man, reading really enriches you, right? And then that's when I had, a, I started to have a love for reading, you know, uh, to put, I would get teased because in lunch lunchtime, I'd have a book. And I would just be in the book, you know, and reading has done so much for me, you know, like I've, I've read about real estate. I've read about business. I've, I've read about things that could, put, put, you know, put me forward. So um, it, it could be used for fun. It could you be used uh, for your progression. And um, that's the mission, man. <laughs> that's the mission right there. <laughs> I got you. It's a mission there to be to be had. I think that's the the biggest thing is uh we want to people to change lives and I believe you're changing lives. Uh you always read about the Pie Piper that he that he played the pipe. He got the rats out of out of the actual out of the actual country and they didn't want to pay him. So then he said, I'm gonna get the kids out of the country. And I believe you're not doing it in a bad way, but I believe you're you're pretty much leveling the field. We're giving kids who look like us uh, a way of now they they see the music differently as I'm reading the point. And like, you know, maybe I need to think about a little bit different. Like growing up, you would say, okay, maybe I want to do this in entertainment and sports. Well, now I may want to be an astronaut because I read your book and your book may inspire me to say, you know what? Maybe I want to say, mom, I want to be an astronaut. And the day that you finally arrived to it, mama took a picture of Saturn. And I brought this picture back or I was on the, I was on Saturn and I got this dirt and I brought this back and I brought it just for you. Dad, I brought this just for you. Dad, you said that I was going to be great one day and I was on the moon pop and and I signed your name. I put I put our family legacy on the moon and I took a picture yeah. and I said that that right there is something that people can never say. We on the moon like our family has a spot on the moon. With right. my handprints on it, like those are the kind of things. And like people may, and like I've always said this, it may sound corny to some people, but that's something that people can say. Well, you can't, you can't duplicate that. That's hard to duplicate. Said my foot was on the moon, or I, I touched Mars, or I was on Saturn, I was on Pluto, I was on Uranus, I was, you know, I was on Neptune. I mean, I went to places that when you say, hey, let's 
let's have a conversation. That's a whole other conversation that we're not even willing to gravitate to to enlighten our minds. Now, you mentioned you, you have a love for music. Is a certain genre of music that you that you're currently focusing on after the book uh, takes off like it needs to take off? So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on the book right now because there's a lot of different things um, I want to do. I want to get it into a film, you know, so um, I'm getting ideas for stories and I'm, I'm trying to finish. I have a, a quarter of it. I got about 40 pages of the movie written up, you know, so um, I'm more focused on the book as of now, but I'm an MC. I, I, I rap. And uh, I also sing. Okay. And I, I love hip hop. I love hip hop, uh, reggae, uh, gospel, and I, I even listen to some country, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got to be you got to be well rounded. My mother always told me. My father said you got to be well rounded to be successful. And for those that are watching, he's, he's speaking. You're looking at a young man who's very well rounded. Uh, most people don't go this route. Um, Books are things that you know. People say, "Ah, book." Like, nah, book. Book is still needed. Uh, we can be, can be digital all you want, but actually, the physical content in your hand changes the narrative all the time. Uh, so everybody who's watching, let's give a bow again for Mr. Jermaine. Just blessing us here. Uh, I think that you know people like yourself, Mr. Smith, is needed. Uh, Y'all keep watching. We may be, like I said, Dis Disney Plus. May pick you up, Netflix. Here we come. Come on, Hulu. And out there in the universe. Out there in the universe. <laughs> let's let's go Prime oh, Video. Let's, let's get it. Hey, get a look out the Brooklyn astronaut. Shout out to Brooklyn, BK all day, New York stand up. They be one of your own. Uh, rising to the top. He be talking about I. <laughs> I'm on top of the mountain. I'm, I'm representing Brooklyn in the moon. So like, let's be honest. Let's take over the world. So the, for those that are watching, let's get big. Let's grow. Hey, let's get big. I got a nationwide, worldwide author on the, on, the, on the line with us today. He's making us look good, Mr. Jermaine Smith. My name is Calvin of the Logan Power Show, nationwide, worldwide. We love y'all. We'll see you soon. Hey. My name is Jermaine. I'm a dream chaser, and I'm all about empowering the community and empowering others while also enjoying life and having fun and using your gifts. So um, I'm a human being. I'm down to earth, and I'm all about helping and giving back to the community. And I would appreciate anybody that wants to come in and support the brand, support what the mission and the idea is about which is giving back the importance of mentorship in our youth in our youth lives. They need more mentors and we need more business owners. And um, that's why I really want to inspire them with the, the idea of going to the moon so they could have dreams that's bigger than themselves. So um, appreciate the hospitality. Uh, check me out, brooklynastronautent.com.